This is part 36 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to add event handlers to dynamically created elements. Let's understand this with an example. Let's design a page that looks like this. I already have the required HTML. Notice that here we have a button with ID BT and add and the value for that is add a new list item and then we have an unordered list with two list items. If we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Now what should happen is when we click this add a new list item button, we want to add a new list item to the unordered list that we have here. So let's see how to do that. So first we should find this button with that ID btn add. So within our jQuery ready function, find the button by ID and on click of the button, we want to execute a function. So this is the function that we want to execute when the click event occurs. So what do we want to do when the click event occurs? We want to add a new list item. So let's create a variable. Let's name this new list item equals let's create a new list item. So li new list item and let's close the list item. And what do we want to do? We want to add that new list item to this unordered list. So let's find that unordered list using the jQuery element selector. And let's use the append method and pass the new list item to this append method. All right, so let's save the changes, reload the page. And when we click this add new list item button, you know, look at that new list item gets ordered, uh, added to that unordered list. Now what we want to do is when we click on any of these list items, we want that list item to slowly fade out. Okay, so let's see how to achieve that. So when a click event occurs, on the list item, that's when we want to do. So what we can do is we can say, okay, give me all list items and we want to bind a click event to all of the list items. So click and when that event occurs, we want to call this function and what we want to do is, you know, we want that list item to slowly fade out and let's specify the speed as 500 milliseconds. So the fade out is going to happen in half a second. So let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and look at this. Let's add a couple of new list items. And when I click on the existing list item, this list item was already there. Look at that. When I click on that, that slowly fades away. But look at the list item that we dynamically added. When I click on this list item that is dynamically added, that does not fade out. Why is that? That's because, look at this, this piece of code will be executed when the page loads, right? When the document is ready. So, you know, at that point when the document was loaded, whatever the list items that were there on the page, to all those list items we have bound a click even handler function, but not to the list item that we are dynamically adding at runtime, right? So that's the reason why this new list item does not fade out when we, when we click on that, okay? So for them to fade out, what we can do is we can wrap this using the jQuery wrapper and then associate, you know, a click event handler for that. So click, we want to call a function and what do we want this function to do? The same thing and now slowly fade out. All right, so let's go ahead, save the changes, reload this page and look at this. When we click on the new list item, even that fades out now and the existing list items also fades out. Okay, so the example is working as expected. We are able to add, you know, click even handler to dynamically added list items as well. But what is the problem with this approach? The problem with this approach is that we are binding a click even handler to every list item. That means if you have 500 list items within this unordered list, then imagine what's going to happen. You will have 500 click even handlers in memory. 
which may negatively affect the performance of your application. So this is not the best thing to do because you know if you have thousand list items there will be thousand click event handlers in memory. Okay, so there's a better way of doing this. So what we can do is we can actually bind the click event handler to the unordered list. What is the unordered list? That's the parent for all the list items. Okay, so when the click event occurs on the unordered list, call this function. That's what we are saying. Okay, but then what I'm going to do here is use, you know, this selector parameter. So first we specify the event, and then the second parameter is the selector. For selector parameter, I'm going to specify li. So what does that mean here? When the click event occurs on any of the list item, the list item itself does not have a click event handler. Okay, so what happens if a, an element in the hierarchy does not have an event handler? The event gets bubbled up. So when the event of the list item is bubbled up, that will be handled by its parent, in this case, the unordered list. The unordered list has got a click event handler. Okay, so that is going to handle the list item's click event. And this keyword here refers to the element that actually triggered the event, in this case, the list item. So the list item is going to slowly fade out. Okay, so this is much better. Now, since we are attaching the click event handler, you know, to the unordered list, that is to the parent, there will be only one copy of that event handler function in memory, irrespective of how many ever list items you have. Even if you have 5,000 list items, there's going to be only one copy of this event handler function in the memory. Okay, so this is much better from a performance standpoint. This also means we can simplify this code also. Okay, now there is no need to associate the click event handler to the element that we are dynamically adding. We can simply add this new list item. So let's copy that and we can get rid of all this code. And on click of the button, all I want to do is add this new list item to this unordered list. Okay, now we are not adding a click event handler and that's fine because you know, the child does not need to have the click event handler. When you click on that new list item that is added, even that click event gets bubbled up to its parent, in this case, the unordered list, and the unordered list has got the click event handler, so it's going to handle that, okay? So let's look at this in action. So let's save the changes. Let's add a couple of list items. Look at this, when I click on the existing list item, that fades out. The new list item, that fades out as well. Okay, the most important thing to remember here is the selector. Okay, now whatever selector you specify here, the event of that element gets bubbled up to the parent that we are specifying here. Okay, now for example, if I specify the selector as li colon even, then only the click event of the list items that are present in even index position will be bubbled up and handled by the parent. So let's look at this in action. Let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and let's add a couple of list items. Now look at this. This first list items is present in index position zero. So that's even. And the second one is index position one. That's odd. Look at this. When I click on the first list item, it fades out, but not the one that is present in odd position. The next one should fade out. Look at that, but the one after that doesn't fade out, no matter how many times you click. But the one after that should fade out. Okay, so this selector is the most important thing. And here is that example that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.